Hello students, in this video we're going to solve an initial value problem and we're going to use um, a technique called the separation of variables um, to go about solving this. Alright, so um, what you see here is um, a differential equation dy dt equals minus 4y and um, this is an initial value problem because um, we're given an initial value. We're told that um, when we evaluate the function um, uh, and we write y as a function here um, at the, the point t equals 0, then um, we get a value 3. Okay, um, we're going to use separation of variables and if you go back and review your definition for separation of variables, um, you'll notice that I'm going to view this problem as um, this minus 4 is going to be the function of t and uh, it's, it's still a function of t, I mean it's just that it's a constant function, that's all. And um, so for all values of t, this um, we get back minus 4. And then y will be the um, function that is a, a function of the um, dependent variable, and that'll just simply be um, y. So um, what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to separate the um, differentials here. So uh, and I'm going to divide both sides by the, in, by the dependent variable. So I'll have dy over y. So it's like I'm doing a cross multiply. Okay. And then um, on the right-hand side, I'll have minus 4 dt. So we get um, an equation that looks like this one here. And um, you'll also uh, see these um, equations written in the following way. And this is in differential form. And uh, to solve these, what you would do is you would you know, push the um, 4 dt over to the right-hand side, and you'd end up with something like this on the left-hand side. Okay, But I just wanted to raise your level of awareness in that situation. Um, okay. Now, um, the benefit of having setting up the equation in this form with dy over y equals minus 4 dt is that we can just simply integrate both sides. And uh, we have um, the integral of dy over y, which is the natural log of the absolute value of y, because y could potentially um, take on negative values. So we'll keep those absolute value bars. Um, I'll show you how we could justify dropping them later. And then if we integrate minus 4 dt, well, that's minus 4 t plus um, some arbitrary constant. I'm going to call it C0. Now, we're going to play with this arbitrary constant, and it's going to take on all kinds of values, um, and I'll keep changing the indice, but um, just keep in mind that this is just always an arbitrary constant. Um, all right, uh, now we need to solve for y, okay? So at this point, we're done with the technique of separation of variables. Um, everything else after this is just um, algebraic manipulation. Okay, I'm going to um, exponentiate both sides. So e to the natural log of y, e, um, that's how I'm going to unravel this or unpack this y, because the, um, the exponential and the natural log are inverse functions of each other. And then um, I have e to the minus 4t plus c0. Now, keep in mind that c0 is an arbitrary constant. And also keep in mind that the properties of uh, the laws of exponent means that if I'm adding the exponents, that means I had um, a product of powers with the same base. So e to the minus 4t times e to the c0 is the same as e to the minus 4t plus c0, where the addition is in the exponent. Okay, now since c0 is arbitrary, then certainly e to the c0 is arbitrary, so I'm just going to call that c. That's just some arbitrary constant. And you could always play that game with arbitrary constants. Um, you know, I can write any number as a, um, uh, any, actually in this case, any positive number as um, e to something. All right, so um, I go on to the next step, <clears throat> and I have the absolute value because the exponential of a natural log is um, an absolute value, and uh, is equal to c e to the minus 4t. And um, now, um, right now, as I have it written, e to the c naught um, would have to be positive. And um, if you look here, um, my initial value. Is, um, is a positive number. So I'm going to drop the absolute values. And um, you'll see that um, by the solution here that once you start out positive, you'll always remain positive. And you could actually take a look at the slope field of this equation. And um, you would also see that um, any solution curve or any integral curve um, for the slope field would um, always stay above the y-axis and would give you a positive solution. Um, if you don't know what that means, just um, keep in mind that um, we're justifying this by the fact that um, c was a positive number and our initial value started out as a positive number. Okay. Then um, 
uh, once I have that result, I'm going to solve the initial value problem. So I'm going to take this solution. I'm going to write it over here. And uh, I just plug in t is 0, and I apply the initial value. On the one hand, y of 0 is equal to c e to the minus 4 times 0, but 4 times 0 is 0. So that means that um, e to the 0 is 1, and c times 1 is c. So my arbitrary constant, uh, I now have a value for it, and it is 3. So notice that y of t is equal to 3 e to the minus 4t. Now some of you might be thinking, wait a minute, don't I add, isn't it always plus c? Um, it was over here when we integrated. But when you exponentiated everything, it came out to be a product, because in the exponential, or in the log space, if you will, um, products turn out to be sums. So be very careful and, and pay special attention to the fact that it is now 3 times e to the minus 4t. If you ever have any doubt, you can always check your answers. That's the, one of the beautiful things about differential equations, is that once you have a solution, you can always check it. So dy dt is equal to the minus 4 from the exponent drops down, and I have 3e e to the minus 4t, but 3e e to the minus 4t was y. So I just put that back and check. I have the differential equation. But when you have an initial value problem, you have an initial condition, you should also double check that. Um, that's a sanity check. Um, by construction over here, it has to be um, 3. But anyways, let's just go through it. y of 0, I plug in 0 for the exponential. e to the 0 is 1. So I have 3 times 1 is equal to 3. So it does satisfy the uh, initial condition as well. So remember, whenever you check your answers with initial value problems, you want to satisfy both the ODE and the initial condition. Um, OK, here's our solution. And that is how you can solve an initial value problem using the separation of variables technique. Good luck.